What's up, everybody? My name is Rick. I'm one of the two song authors working on Autica. You can find me on the Harmonix Discord as HMXRick4889. This video is just meant to help you set everything up so that you can start authoring your own community maps as soon as possible. If you'd like to know more, ask in the comments or join us over on Discord, discord.gg slash harmonics. This video has been broken up into short timestamps. They're in the description. All right, let's do it. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is you want to download and install Reaper. To do that, just go to reaper.fm, then click download Reaper and get the latest version there. And then pick the version that's appropriate for you. And then next, you want to download and install Grace. So for that, you go to onesmallclue.com slash plugin slash grace. When you go to download the sampler, again, download the one that's right for you. So after you've downloaded and installed Reaper and Grace, the next thing you want to do is locate and load the authoring template that we've made in Reaper. So to do that, you go to your program files, Oculus, software, then software again. In this case, it's Harmonix Project K. And then we're going into Community Maps, Tools, and finally, Reaper Template. And in that folder is where you'll find Community Maps Reaper Template. Okay, so once you have located and loaded the authoring template in Reaper, you're gonna open it up. It's gonna look like this. You're gonna see Laserface. Um, the authoring for Laserface is preloaded into the track. So first thing is we wanna make sure that you're functional, right? Get your preferences set up. So we're gonna go to Options. We're gonna go to Preferences. And you're gonna scroll down here until you see Media and then MIDI. Click MIDI. And you're gonna see one option here says ticks per quarter note for new MIDI items. You wanna make sure that's 480. If it's anything other than that, your, your charts will be off. Your maps will be, you know, desynced from the music. That's not good, let's not do that. Cool, next thing. We're gonna double click on this expert left hand laser face. Opens up, we're gonna go to actions. Then we're gonna go to show action list. And then we're gonna click down here where it says rescript. We're gonna click load. And you're going to click the top um, in, within the folder, Harmonix Project K, Community Maps, Tools. In the Tools folder there, you're gonna see a bunch of scripts here. You're gonna see Reaper Autica Path Builder. You're gonna see Reaper Grid Viewer. So you're gonna select all of these, all the way down to Reaper Swap Hands. And you're gonna click Open. And that is going to load all of these actions into your actions list. Next thing we wanna do is assign the shortcuts to each of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now, but it's basically, it's in the readme doc. So if you want an exact example of how we do it, just go ahead and look at the readme doc. Okay, so once you clicked open, you will have loaded the samples into Grace. And you can see right here, there's a sample right there. All right, so next thing we wanna do is we want to launch the grid viewer. So the grid viewer, if you set your shortcut right, should be Alt V. And so let's explain this. What is the grid viewer? The grid viewer shows your authoring. So as you author a song, you will see the notes pop up here. So obviously blue hand correlates to left hand and red or orange correlates to the right hand. And then you'll see in these four spots here, number is 98, 99, 100, and 101. Those are the melee attacks. Like right there. Okay, so next is we're gonna use the path builder just to put together a quick, quick little chain. So I'm just gonna actually go to actions, show action list. We're gonna double click 
on Autic um, Reaper Autica Path Builder. And there it is. All right, so I'm going to select just this last note. And so let's take a quick look over what all this stuff means on the path builder. So right there, first of all, this note is on number 39, MIDI note number 39. So you can see right here on the path builder that this first note is on 39. So those two things correspond to each other. Next thing is how many steps or how many nodes or targets are there in this chain. So you can have as few as two, and you can have all the way up to 65. 65 gets a little crazy. We're gonna put it on 16 nodes, make it smaller. Boom. So all the way up to 65. So interval, you can see right up here. What does interval mean? So we have quarter notes, 4T means quarter note triplets. 8 means eighth notes. 8T means eighth note triplets. 16 means 16th notes. 16T means 16th note triplets. 32 means 32nd notes. 32T, 32nd note triplets, obviously. And then finally, 64th notes. If you can find a use for that, you know, you're an amazing person because <laughs> it's. It's, it takes a saw, like a unique set of skills to make a 64th note work. Normally you're gonna be using uh, 16th notes and 16th is probably it. Maybe you'll use some 30 seconds, maybe occasionally some triplets in there too. So next thing, it says initial angle. So the initial angle is just the direction that your chain starts in to begin with. I'm gonna make this back to four steps by the way. So you can see here, as I change the angle, changing all around, now these numbers right below it will snap to certain angles. So 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 135, 180, et cetera. Uh, angle increment is another thing. This is like the curve within your chain. So if I turn this, you can see it start to turn there. I'm actually gonna jump here over to step distance just to make this so step distance is uh how much space there is between each target so i'm going to expand this so just to show you there's little numbers here just like there are below the initial angle there's numbers below step distance and they will tell you you know 1 1.3 1.5 different increments between the targets so all right increment angle i'm just gonna show you there so we're back to that, just showing you how it twists. So you can twist it left, you can twist it right. Now, <laughs> increment, increment is, uh, it sounds trickier than it is. All, it's, all it really means is how much extra increment or, or um, turn there is between each target. So if I make this eight steps and I make increment increments, I, I increase the value. You can see here it starts to spiral inward and that's because each successive target increments a little bit extra than the, so it creates the effect of a spiral. Yep, you can obviously do that left and right too. And just a little bit of advice here, you can combine that with the increment angle to do some unique shapes. Anyways, on to the last thing here is uh, step increment. So just how increment, increment, just how that makes things spiral. Well, step increment with, means with each successive step, there'll be a little bit extra space. So with step distance, everything is equal. With step increment, you're changing the amount of space between each step. And finally, the last two things here are chain. So if you want to turn this into a chain, or you can just leave these as a single, you know, single target. So you have to shoot individually. You can flip these horizontally. You can flip things vertically. And then once you click go, it will put the target in place. So 
I'm gonna put six steps here. And it's gonna again, it's gonna start right here on this MIDI note number 39. I'm gonna make it curve a little bit and I'm gonna make it a chain. And finally, actually, I'm gonna increase the step distance so it goes all the way to MIDI note number 42, as you can see right there. I'm gonna push go. And when I do that, it creates the chain. Now if I push Alt-V to bring up the grid viewer, you're going to see the chain right here. I'll remove this note just to make it easier to see. So there's the chain we just created. All right, so I'm going to solo out the audio so you can hear. So, so I've brought the audio in from Laserface. Next thing is we're going to open up the expert left hand track. And we want to, again, launch the grid viewer, which is Alt V. That was a shortcut that should have been set up. Um, and then it's also helpful to have the path builder. This is a handy tool for a lot of reasons. We'll get into that in a little bit. So let's get into the macros. We set up the macros. We'll now take a look at what they can do. So first thing is we have sounds. These can adjust like the sound effects of each target. So if I push Q, that is going to make this sound like a kick drum. If I push W, sounds like a snare. If I push E, sounds like, well, we call this a percussion sound, just general percussion. If I push R, we call that a hi-hat start. And then if I push T, we call that just a regular hi-hat sound in this. Those last two, the hi-hat start and the hi-hat regular, those are usually used in chains. So we'll get to that in a second. So I'm gonna set it back to a kick drum. Now there's a couple other things we can do here. And if you look over at the grid viewer, I'll give you some examples. So if you push one, that makes it a standard target. If you push two, that turns it into, you can see here I'm turning the blue into a horizontal target. If I push three, I'm turning the blue into a vertical target. And if I push four, I'm turning the blue into the start of a chain. So it, this will actually be a bug if I don't have other notes that follow it. And then finally, if I push five, this will make it into a, a node on a chain or one of the targets that follows the first. This is the first note in the chain. The five will make it the latter note, second and beyond. So I'm gonna turn it back to one for now though. Leave this as a regular target. Okay, so you've seen how to make chains, you've seen how to use the path builder, you've seen how to make a bunch of different targets and different sounds. So the last thing to really talk about is the MIDI notes at the top. So the first one is these right here, these gray ones. So these are your melees. So melees are assigned to either MIDI notes 98 99, 100, or 101. And the Y key is the one we recommend using for the melee sound, which is that sound. So, a uh, quick tip about melees. We suggest you author them just to 100 or 101 if you're doing a single attack. If you want to do two attacks, like simultaneously, two melees coming in at the same time, we recommend you do 100 and 98 or 199, so you like stack them on top of one another. You know, feel free to try whatever you want, but that's our just suggestion. If you do just the low melee notes, just 98 or 99 on their own, it's a little too low, doesn't feel quite right. And uh, if you author them, you know, on opposite sides, so like 100 and then 101 at the same time, that also feels kind of weird. So we don't recommend you do that, but it's your map, you're welcome to try whatever you want. Uh, Right here on the top, on this MIDI note 127, this is called a repeater. A repeater will take everything that is authored underneath it. 
so all this content right here and it will repeat it at the next time it sees that so you can see right here the next time it sees in laser face is measure 51 but I'm gonna tweak it for the sake of this video I'm gonna make it shorter I'm gonna make it only about two measures just so you can see what it does so I'm gonna shorten it for the blue orange targets and the melee targets I'm gonna zoom in and so it's gonna go from measure three to measure five and then I'm going to copy and paste all of them again in measure five so just to show you what it does I'm gonna highlight the area and then when I zoom in Here's what it looks like. Now if I push P, this is the shortcut we talked about in the actions list that will populate the repeater. And you can see it did it right there. So now this is a mirror image of the first initial two, author two measures of authoring. Okay, so we've looked over what the MIDI notes do. Uh, there's a couple other little details here. Uh, the GP sliders you can add, which is right here, GP slider one, GP slider two. You can add these by pushing the plus button down here. That will bring up this menu. And then you can look in the drop down menu and select GP slider one, GP slider two. Um, velocity is also another one. Velocity will show you the velocity will show you the type of note that you're making. So a, uh, a snare is like uh, 127, a kick is 20, velocity 20. You can see right here as I change it, actually I'll change this one as a better example. You can see how the velocity changes. You can tell right there. It's a kick, percussion sound, or if it's a hi-hat. Okay. So. The GP slider is the last piece here, and this is just telling you, you can see right here, how far the position vertically and the position horizontally. So if I further up equals further right on the GP slider one, and then further up just equals further up, and further down equals further down on GP slider two. All right, finally, we are going to save this and turn it into a map that we can play. So if we go to file, go to export project MIDI, and we're going to go to, in that window, we're going to go to browse. And I'm calling this laserface underscore test. So you need to call it the song's short name, so laserface. Um, and then the underscore test is like my name for it. You can call it whatever you want. All right, everybody. So that's everything. Uh, covers all the basics. There's a lot of advanced techniques out there. And you know, if you're interested in getting into more you know, of the advanced techniques, let us know in the comments or over on discord.gg slash harmonics. Again, I'm HMXRick4889 over on Discord. Uh, yeah, so let us know if you have any questions. Hope to hear from you guys soon.